Hello friend, I'm Randall Terry. I want to congratulate Wayne Grudem. To my knowledge, we have never met. But the good folks at townhall.com had the patriotic sense to post what he wrote. My wife read it to me the other night and said, you've got to hear this, you've got to hear this. And I thought, this is so good, I'm going to read it on the air. All right, so I'm giving credit where credit is due. Consider this an instant replay of a grand slam in politics because this is brilliant. Now, let me set this up before I read it. Now that the good ship Lollipop has set sail, and I'm talking about the, the Hillary Clinton boat, and the Potamkin village, uh, triumph of the will, uh, smoke and mirrors that we just saw at the DNC is behind us, the real work of getting people out to vote in November has begun. And there's something called voter suppression. Voter suppression, this is a key tool used in political battles, and it goes like this. I know that you're never gonna vote for my campaign or my candidate, but I want you to not show up. I want you to not vote for my major opponent, or I want you to vote for a third party candidate because usually you would vote for my opponent, but I just wanna suppress your vote, get you to stay home, get you to use your vote for a third party candidate. That is going on right now with the Clinton people. They are doing everything in their power to suppress the evangelical vote. And there are many good, honest, hardworking evangelicals with whom I disagree fiercely who are telling us that we cannot in good conscience vote for Donald Trump. I have done many shows on this. You can go to our archives, watch them for free. I think that is absolute nonsense and it is flawed logic. But rather than just recite my own reasonings again and again, I thought, let's just go ahead and read on a teleprompter, which I almost never do, read on a teleprompter the words of Wayne Grudem. And so, I begin. I'm actually gonna put my glasses on. We'll lay some B-roll in from time to time and, and <clears throat> this is really, this is unusual. For those of you who are regular watchers of the show, you know this, but I'm doing it because it's so good. Again, congratulations, Wayne. Some of my Christian friends tell me they can't in good conscience vote for Donald Trump because when faced with a choice between, quote, the lesser of two evils, close quote, the morally right thing to do is choose neither one. They recommend voting for a third party or a write-in candidate. As a professor who has taught Christian ethics for 39 years, I think their analysis is incorrect. Now that Trump has won the GOP nomination, I think voting for Trump is a morally good choice. American citizens need patience with each other in this difficult political season. Close friends are inevitably going to make different decisions about the election. We still need to respect each other and thank God that we live in a democracy with freedom to differ about politics. Amen to that. And we need to keep talking with each other because democracies function best when thoughtful citizens can calmly and patiently dialogue about the reasons for their differences. This is my contribution to that discussion. His heading is, a good candidate with flaws. I do not think that voting for Donald Trump is a morally evil choice because there is nothing morally wrong with voting for a flawed candidate if you think he will do more good for the nation than his opponent. In fact, it is the morally right thing to do. I did not support Trump in the primary season. I even spoke against him at a pastor's conference in February, but now I plan to vote for him. I do not think it is right to call him an evil candidate. I think rather he is a good candidate with flaws. And here's where they put up a political cartoon. He is egotistical, bombastic, and brash. He often lacks nuance in his statements. Sometimes he blurts out mistaken ideas, such as bombing the families of terrorists, that he later must abandon. He insults people. He can be vindictive when people attack him. He has been slow to disown and rebuke the wrongful words and actions of some angry fringe supporters. 
He has been married three times and claims to have been unfaithful in his marriages. These are certainly flaws, but I don't think they are disqualifying flaws in this election. If you just join me, I'm Randall Terry. You're watching Voice of Resistance, and I am reading a political treatise from Wayne Grudem that showed up on townhall.com. I've got to take a break, giving credit where credit is due. This is like a replay of a political hardball grand slam. Don't go away. You're going to want to hear this because it gets better and better and better, and you're probably going to laugh. I know I did. 